ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நமக வெல்கம் டு ஆர் ஆன்லைன் டீச்சிங் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் சிபிஎஸ்இ கிளாஸ் டுவெல் எக்கனாமிக்ஸ் ப்ரொபென்சிட்டி டு கன்சியூம் ப்ரொபென்சிட்டி டு கன்சியூம் இஸ் த ப்ரொபோர்ஷன் ஆஃப் இன்கம் ஸ்பெண்ட் ஆன் கன்சம்ஷன் ப்ரொபோர்ஷன் ஆஃப் இன்கம் ஸ்பெண்ட் ஆன் கன்சம்ஷன் our consumption depends on our income the expenditure which rises with rise in income is called induced consumption expenditure induced consumption expenditure suppose income prices then consumption expenditure also rises like if the income rises to 2000 from 1000 our consumption expenditure also rises from 500 to 700 that's what is called as induced consumption expenditure but even at zero level of income there is some minimum level of consumption we call that as autonomous consumption expenditure autonomous consumption expenditure so this is nothing but the minimum level of consumption even at zero level of income now there are two measures of consumption expenditure so let us understand the two measures one is average propensity to consume and the other one is marginal propensity to consume average propensity to consume is denoted by apc and marginal propensity to consume is denoted by mpc average propensity to consume apc is a measure of total consumption expenditure as a proportion of total income so it's a measure of total consumption expenditure as a measure of proportion of total income the formula for apc is c by y c is the consumption expenditure total consumption expenditure and y is the proportion of total income total consumption expenditure by total income now this value of apc it can either be lesser than 1 or greater than 1 suppose y is 2000 y is rupees 2000 pi is the income income is rupees 2000 and consumption expenditure is rupees 1500 consumption expenditure is rupees 1500 let us now calculate apc apc is c by y so 1500 divided by 2000 Five three is fifteen. Five four is twenty. Three by four. It means point seven five. Now, when we calculated, it uh, APC is point seven five. Point seven five is lesser than one. Hence, in this first one, I've shown you, I've proved that APC is lesser than one. 
Now let me prove that APC is greater than 1. If income is 2000. Consumption expenditure is 2500. It means more than the income, consumption expenditure is higher. 2500. Now let us calculate APC. APC is C by Y. C is 2500 and Y is 2000. It is 5 by 4, 1.25. Now I have proved that APC is greater than 1. So understand average propensity to consume is nothing but the measure of total consumption expenditure as a proportion of total income. Marginal propensity to consume. Marginal propensity to consume is the measure of change in consumption expenditure. This change is denoted by the letter delta. Change in consumption expenditure to change in income. Marginal propensity to consume is MPC. MPC is equal to delta C by delta Y. Change in consumption expenditure to change in income. That is why we have used the symbol delta. MPC is delta C by delta Y. The value of MPC is lesser than or equal to 1. Lesser than or equal to 1. So it, it is between 0 and MPC is 0 if entire addition to income is saved and MPC is equal to 1 when the entire addition to income is spent on consumption. MPC is 0 if the entire addition to income is saved. It means without spending when the income is saved you get MPC as 0. At the same time, when this addition to income is completely spent on consumption, then MPC will be equal to 1. Let us prove this. Suppose the change in consumption expenditure is 500. Delta C is 500. Delta C is nothing but the change in consumption expenditure. Earlier might be the consumption expenditure was 1000, but now the consumption expenditure has increased to 1500. Then the change in consumption expenditure is 500. 1500 minus 1000 is 500. And change in income is also 500. Take for example, earlier the income was 2000. Now the income has increased to 2500. So equal change. The income has also changed by 500. Consumption expenditure has also changed by 500. Both has changed equal. Let us now calculate MPC. MPC is equal to delta C by delta y. It means 500 by 500 is equal to 1. So we have proved that MPC is equal to 1 when the entire addition to income is spent on consumption. Now let us see MPC is 0 if the entire addition to income is saved. Now this 500 is the consumption expenditure change in consumption expenditure whereas this 500 is change in income now this complete 500 is saved it means mpc is equal to delta c but here nothing is spent 
everything is saved so there is change in consumption expenditure is zero earlier if, if he has spent 1000 even now he is going to spend only rupees 1000 on consumption then delta c is zero divided by change in income is 500 so the answer is zero hence we have proved mpc is zero if the entire addition to income is saved propensity to save is the proportion of income saved so our income that is y is either used for consumption or for savings a part of it is used for consumption and the remaining is saved now let us know what is this propensity to save it is the proportion of income saved there are two measures of propensity to save one is APS it means average propensity to save as how we already discussed about average propensity to consume even for savings we have two measures one is average propensity to save and the other one is MPS it means marginal propensity to save average propensity to save this is denoted by APS average propensity to save it is the ratio between total saving and total income hence APS is equal to S by Y total savings and total income so this ratio total saving by total income APS is the ratio between total saving and total income. The value of APS can be negative. Suppose consumption expenditure is greater than income. Is greater than income. It means there is negative saving. Take for example, 500 rupees is your income, but your consumption expenditure is 800. It means there is negative saving of minus 300. Or suppose your, uh, your uh, consumption expenditure is 5000, but your income is only 4000. It means there is a negative saving of 1000. So let me explain uh, with an example. Savings is equal to 50 okay minus 50 and income is 100 now if we are going to calculate APS okay APS it means C, uh, S by Y APS is equal to S by Y this is S this is y so we get minus 0.5 hence aps is equal to minus 0.5 now you can understand that the value of aps can be negative the value of aps is negative when consumption expenditure is greater than income let me give you one more example if consumption expenditure consumption expenditure is 2500 and the income is 2000 so APS let us calculate APS APS is S by Y 
Now, when the consumption expenditure is 2,500, it means there is no saving, no positive saving. There is only negative. So, it is minus 500 as consumption expenditure exceeds income. And the total income is 2,000. It is minus 1 by 4. It means minus 0.25. This is how you need to calculate APS. Marginal propensity to save. Marginal propensity to save is denoted by MPS. It is the ratio between change in savings and change in income. MPS is equal to change in saving is denoted by delta S and change in income is denoted by delta Y. Change in savings by change in income. It varies from 0 to 1 as how MPC varies from 0 to 1. This is the same way MPS also varies from 0 to 1. When the entire addition to income is spent on consumption, saving is 0, then MPS is 0. When the entire addition to income is saved, it means the change in income is not used for consumption, but it is used entirely for savings. Then MPS is equal to 1. The income of the economy is used either for consumption and a part of it is used for savings. So I can just calculate. APC plus APS is equal to 1. Same way, MPC plus MPS is equal to 1. So, how do we get this? Now, APS and APC, you calculate. When you calculate it, you get it equal to 1. For example, if APC is 1.25 and APS, what we had calculated earlier, we got minus 0.25. Minus 0 0.25. 1.25 plus into minus minus. 0.25. Now you subtract, you will get 1. 1 is equal to 1. Hence, it is proved that APS plus APC is equal to 1. Same way with MPC and MPS. Only thing is, it is change in the consumption expenditure and change in income. Same way, MPS is change in savings and change in the total income. When you calculate that, you will get it is equal to 1. If you want to find out from this formula, if you want to find out MPC, you can easily get this formula. MPC is equal to 1 minus MPS. Same way, if you want to find MPS, MPS is equal to 1 minus MPC. Same way with APS and APC also. APC is equal to 1 minus APS and APS is equal to 1 minus APC. You need to only learn these two formulas. So it's very clear that a part of the income is used for consumption and a part of the income is used 
as savings.